All right, a little bit sick today, but we're still moving forward in the print farm. I uh, had a little bit of a jam in the AMS, so right now I'm just going to set up the camera and we're going to try to unclog this. So essentially the roll got caught here in AMS 4, and uh, stupidly I cut it and it kept feeding it in there. So now it's stuck between here and somewhere in there, and I can't get it out of there. So I'm gonna have to open this up and pull the PTFE tube out the back, pull that filament out, and while I'm at it, I'm just going to clean up the inside of the AMS, replace some of the desiccant that's in there, and make sure everything is looking all neat and tidy before we put it back together. All right, to take that PTFE tube out of the back, there's a little button down inside of here that you depress, and then the whole tube comes out the back. And you can see our filament stuck in there. We'll just grab it out. That should have taken care of everything. And our PTFE tube slide back into place. Next, I'm gonna open up these desiccant pouches. I know they're long gone. You can see they're saturated in there. Right now, I'm just gonna stock these with a couple of the desiccant pouches that come with the rolls of filament. They're probably a little past their prime, but they're better than nothing. Then I'm just gonna come in and take a look at these roller wheels, clean up any of the gunk that is piled up on the inside there, and we'll get this guy set back up. All right, let's get this print loaded up again and start it back up. Looks like I'm also out of black on the A1 Mini, so let's get that loaded up and get more of the floppy disk coasters printed out because I just got an order for eight of them. All right, I think I've got enough filament left on here to get at least two more of these done, if not three. This is Pet G, so it's a pain in the butt to get off of here. And this filament is different from like every single other one of the filaments that I use, mainly because it's a different brand. When I was looking for the Festool Green, the closest one I could find in PETG was from any cubic and it's this stuff here it's about 20 ish dollars for a one kilogram spool but it's strong stuff and uh, it prints well on the a1 mini too these guys that just finished up well let's get some more going got the barbell coasters going on the p1p and i've also got a torture toaster going on this a1 mini with some of the petg hf Finally got the settings dialed in. This thing is looking awesome. Currently printing it at 255C on the nozzle and 80C on the bed. I think I did three walls, three top layers, three bottom layers, and then 10% gyroid infill. So I guess looks can be deceiving. I was actually able to get four more of these out of that, what was left on that roll. Honestly, I could probably get another one out of what's there. It's harder to tell with these ones because they don't have the same estimated me measurements left on the side like the cardboard spools do. If it ends up failing, it's got a filament run out sensor on it anyway. So I should be okay to just run this through until it runs out and then swap it out for one of my other almost empty spools. All right, little unfortunate event here. It looks like there was some sort of layer shift. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna mess up the inside of there once it's past that point. But we'll see when it's finished, and if it does, I'll reprint it so we have kind of a more fair comparison between this and the Elegoo Rapid PETG. It's got the A1 Mini here ironing the top of these to give it a nice smooth finish. You can see where it's completed versus where it hasn't. I've had a hit or miss luck with the ironing on the A1 Mini. Sometimes it comes out great and other times it's just absolute garbage. With that said, this one irons perfect. I've never had any issues with the quality of ironing on the P1P, only on the A1 Minis. And I've 
thought I've dialed in the settings a little bit, but every time I think I get it perfect, I go and do a print and, you know, it's just not there. So far, so good on these though. And this is kind of what I'm talking about with the ironing on the A1 Mini. It's just a really rough texture there. I played around with the settings a little bit, even tried uh, hitting it with the torch. This one, I thought I got it really close, but you can still see a lot of that fuzz on the top there. Then I printed it out with the P1P and it came out perfect. That one's already been mailed out, so I don't have that to show you, but yeah, I'm just not sure. Another example on the A1 Mini are these two coasters. They're both printed on the same exact machine, just at different times, even with the same settings. So you can see this one kind of rough around the edge there and up here. Like I, I wouldn't feel comfortable really selling this. But then this one that just finished up uh, about a half hour ago, it looks absolutely perfect. So maybe it has something to do with moisture in the filament. Um, when I printed these out, we were getting some rain, so that could be a possibility. It's been pretty dry the last couple of days, so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on uh, ironing and your luck so far. All right, the A1 Mini Torture Toaster with the Bamboo PETG HF just finished up. These move perfectly on both sides. In fact, they are a little bit loose. Inside of here, three is uh, the easiest so far, but four and five do move. They are a little bit too loose though, so they get stuck inside of there a little bit. I think I broke one of these when I went to pop this up the first time. It does move, but it does not move when I press this up. And then you can see the overhang is not terrible, but I think I need to turn the cooling settings up a little bit. Once we get to that 80 degrees or so, it really starts to fail there. But overall, very happy with it. You can see the whole thing is that it's a very consistent matte sheen, aside from the parts that printed on the bed. It did have a layer shift, so that could have caused some of the issues with this. But overall, very pleased with it. We've got the Elegoo Rapid PETG printing now, doing the same exact test using the same exact file. You see this is much glossier, but still looking good so far. Also just finished this up in the red PETG HF. Came out pretty nice. I printed one in the Elegoo as well. I'll save that for the dedicated video, but this thing, I wanted to test some print in place models just to see, you know, if any stringing or anything would uh, affect that. And honestly, it came out phenomenal. You can see the print quality is just something else. No ringing or anything, very clean layers there. Uh, I think this is an issue with something dirty on my bed or maybe there was glue left over, I don't know. But this is pretty neat and I'm not a huge fan of shiny glossy surfaces so we're going to do some strength tests on this stuff in the actual dedicated review video. I'm just finishing uh, printing some of the last remaining models that I wanted to test out. So be on the lookout for that video, it'll be coming uh, in the next couple of days. And Creality also sent me over their Falcon 2 Pro 40 watt laser engraver cutter machine. It's a mouthful. So I'm going to be doing a couple videos with this thing in the shop. I've had a couple different laser engravers in the past from diode and CO2. So you'll have to check out some of the videos on this when they come out. But so far coming from a, an 80 watt CO2 as my most recent laser. I'm very impressed with this. One thing I didn't get with this was the adjustment feet that lift it up. And that might be an issue because I also had them send me the rotary, but I am gonna need this thing lifted up a little bit higher in order for the rotary to fit in here. I'm gonna have to take these out as it is, but I think we can, uh, I think we can solve that problem ourselves though. Let's go check online and see if there is an, a 3D printable file for that. Well, would you look at that? All I did was come onto printables and search Falcon 2 Pro. And there's a whole bunch of things in here that I think I'm gonna look at uh, adding. For now, let's get the risers. I'm gonna open it up in Orca Slicer and I've been testing some of the Bamboo Lab PTG HF. So I think that is what we're going to print these in. Over on A1 Mini 2. Send her on down to the printer. All right, one thing I wanted to see if maybe we could do ourselves is model some sort of placement piece for in here. And it, may, it doesn't even have to be in the far left corner, although it'd be nice to have it there so we can use the entire bed. But what I'm looking for is just something so when I go to place the material in here, I can push it up against the bottom left corner and 
kind of have a spot there where it's going to reference every time so at least i know the piece is square i mean i suppose that's not that big of a deal when you have the camera now is it though still it would be a nice project to 3d model and i'm sure i'm not the only one who is looking for something like that oh yeah and look what just arrived the cool plate super tag i got one of these for the a1 mini to try out and i also got one for the p1p in the next video, we're going to test out some dog keychains. See if I can't get a beagle to work, maybe. That would be a friggin' miracle on the A1 Mini, right? The only way I got those beagle ears to actually stay on was with this cryo grip here. And honestly, just from feeling the texture of that super tack, I think this is going to do better and probably at a lower temperature, but we're going to find out in the next video. And also in the next video, we're going to get those riser feet installed onto the Falcon 2 Pro here. In the past, I've used a CO2 laser to do all of my engravings for the most part, especially on tumblers with the stainless steel powder coated finish. Curious to see how this one's gonna do that too. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the upcoming content I've got planned. And I just wanna give a huge shout out to every single one of you who've watched one of the videos or subscribed, liked, commented. I'm blown away by the support from a lot of you and uh, it's crazy how fast the channel's growing. At the time of recording this, we're just under 4,000 subscribers and a little over a month ago, we weren't even monetized yet. So it's pretty crazy. With all that said, this is where it ends. Take care folks, I'll see you next time.